Okay, that intro was long enough. Let's cut to the chase and see what we have here today. We have a look at the new flagship router of Sitecom named Greyhound. The Greyhound comes to the market with the expression it's the best router we've seen so far. And when we speak of routers, we speak of Wi-Fi speed, range and stability. So let's find out if it fulfills our expectation, but first a physical tour of the device itself. Most people won't place a router in direct sight, but would you ever do so, then you might as well go for the Greyhound, as it's probably the sexiest router on the market today. Now when we look at the front of the device, we see the brushed aluminum look with the engraved logo in the center, which will light up when powered on. You can however turn this off if you desire so. On the right side we have two buttons, to enable or disable both 2.4GHz and 5GHz Wi-Fi bands, with accordingly two activity lights to show which ones are being used. On the top left corner we see a whole lot of activity lights to inform you if a given connection is active or not. On the top we see the big antennas who are non-removable but have each an extra gain of 5 dB. When we move to the back we can see some venting holes in the shapes of lightning flashes and on the bottom a whole series of connectors. Starting from the left we have two audio connections, one optical connection and one normal 3.5mm audio jack, followed by a USB 3 connector and 4 gigabit ethernet connections. Next we have the WAN port, the on-off switch, power connection and reset button. When we move further to the side of the router we find another USB 3.0 and SD card slot. But wait, two audio connections on the router? Why do we need that for? Well, the idea is that you connect well, any kind of speaker or receiver to the router and from there on you can stream music to and from every device connected to the network. The idea is nice, but the implementation is not there yet. For instance, streaming from Spotify or other streaming services is not possible yet. To me, this is not something I'm looking for in a router, but it's nice to have should you ever find a need for this. Ok, so I have talked about all the external features, but actually it's the inside that has the most interesting features. So let's take a look on what's on the inside. We can get a good idea of what's on the inside by just taking a glance at the box it came in. The Greyhound uses a 1.4GHz dual core Qualcomm internet processor with 512MB of DDR3 memory. It comes with an advertised Wi-Fi speed of 1750Mbps on 5GHz band and 800Mbps on the 2.4GHz band. It supports beamforming, band steering, Qualcomm Stream Boost and Qualcomm Multi-User EFX. Next to the supported features and great hardware, one of, if not the biggest selling point, is the firmware the Greyhound uses. It's one of the first routers who comes standard with the OpenWRT system. If you are a person who likes to tinker around with the firmware of your router, or if you are someone who just wants the minimum and ease of use, both will find what they need in the OpenWRT system. A more in-depth review of the OpenWRT system will come in the next video, so please like and subscribe if you want to see more of this. And last, but certainly not least, we come to the test we performed. The tests we performed were to see which speeds we could reach in a normal use circumstance. We both tested Wi-Fi AC and end versions. First test we performed with the router was in line of sight on a distance of 10 meters. On Wi-Fi end version we reached the speed of 9.1 megabytes per second transfer speed. On the Wi-Fi AC version we reached a maximum of 24 megabytes per second transfer speed. Next test we performed was on another floor, so signal had to go through the ceiling with an approximate distance of about 4 meters. Tests were performed three times and average was taken with results shown in the graph. On Wi-Fi N we had about 6 megabytes per second transfer speeds, while on Wi-Fi AC we still had about 10 megabytes per second transfer speed. Other findings I had whilst using this router is that my Belkin Wemo switches performed a lot better than before. Before switches were only half of the time detected, which meant I had to manually turn the switches on and off, but since using a decent router all problems have disappeared. So, conclusion time. The Sidecom Greyhound is in many ways the ultimate router. It offers many connections, good wireless performance and runs on the versatile OpenWRT system. The additional connectors are handy if you just need those but would not immediately tempt me to consider this model. OpenWRT on the other hand makes my heart beat faster. The abilities you unlock are virtually endless due to the open source firmware. In the next video I will further dig in the usage and advantages of OpenWRT, but for now we can agree this is a big plus. The router is for sale at the moment for a hefty 299 euros, which isn't cheap, but gives you a router which will outperform many routers to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.